In less than two weeks, the Scarlet and Violet Pokemon card sets will finally be here. I cannot believe it's only been two months since Crown Zenith came out. It feels like it's been at least six months. It feels like it's taking forever to English to print and release these dang sets. And in Japan, have they not only released three Scarlet and Violet sets, they just announced two more sets that are coming out. And in English, we haven't even got our first one yet. But it's finally right around the corner. So that means we have to do my top 10 Scarlet and Violet Pokemon cards coming out in this set. Just a reminder, this is not me telling you to invest in these cards. These are just my personal top 10 cards that I like the most in this set. The first card we have here is a Slowpoke Art Rare. I love this card. I think it's absolutely adorable. And I love the little kind of Where's Waldo aesthetic of it, where you have all these different details and you're kind of looking for a Pokemon, looking for a Pokemon, and then bam, there's Slowpoke peeking out of the garage. Obviously, I am a Gen 1 boomer, so I love Slowpoke. I think he is adorable, his dumb, cute face. I love how the details start in the front and then they kind of fade as they go back. It's kind of like I'm playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with all the texture pop in that happens when you get close to stuff. Yeah, I really like this card. I think it's beautiful. I love the aesthetic. On to the next one. Number nine is another art rare, and this is the Armorage. I love that you have this kind of city element. It's almost like the same city that Slowpoke's in, but because this artist uses a more kind of realistic style with all of these different colors and the rainbow pattern happening and everything. Oh man, it's just so good. I love the perspective because you have Armorage in the front. He's kind of looking down the alleyway. I don't know if he's waiting to ambush someone or if he's just waiting for somebody and it happens to be raining. So he's chilling underneath the doorway. I love Armorage. He's probably one of my favorite Pokemon from the new Scarlet and Violet video game. So I'm really happy to see him get such a beautiful art rare. Number eight is the Gardevoir EX. So I honestly love this entire line because it tells a story. One of my favorite Pokemon card lines is actually in generations with the Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard because that kind of does a similar thing. I like when the three cards can tell a story. And this one kind of tells the story of a family. You have the younger couple, and then they have a baby, and then it looks like the baby grows up, maybe moves out, and then Gardevoir is with them, and Gardevoir kind of evolves as their life evolves. I think it's just kind of a beautiful little story. Number seven, I may not quite understand Great Tusk just yet because I haven't gotten to him in the video game, but this is just a more badass looking Don fan in the middle of a freaking sandstorm, dude. It's so cool looking, the artwork, here just blows my mind. Obviously, Max Mofo is back. He's opening product and he keeps mentioning the fact that there's a lot of artworks where the Pokemon's kind of small and then the artist has a lot of creativity that they can inject into the actual surrounding to try and tell a bit of a story. And I really like that direction. I like how they've been approaching cards recently where they're really trying to not just show kind of the Sugimori-esque, like here is the Pokemon and then in the background is a stock photo. Now we're getting these stories within the borders of the card. They're killing it. Next up is my boy Gyarados at number six. I really like these Terra Full Art cards. The only problem is the hats. I hate the hats. I had the pleasure of purchasing a couple of these from Japan and having them in my hand and the texture and the way that they look with the white background, the contrast and colors and everything happening. It's just, it's really, really nice looking. Now, thankfully the hats in this particular artwork and the Arcanine artwork don't really come into play. They're kind of hidden behind a lot of stuff on the card. I haven't warmed up to the hats. I just think that they're dumb. I'm sorry. You just can't convince me otherwise. I just think they look really bad. Wow. I didn't realize that I put them back to back, but RK9, I just like a little bit better than Gyarados. My boy RK9, the pseudo legendary from Gen 1. He's absolutely amazing. I've been streaming a little bit of the new Pokemon Scarlet. I've never played it before, so if you want to check that out, we've been streaming it live on the channel. I recently caught a Growlithe. Super excited to get an RK9, and everything that I said about the Gyarados applies here. The cards just look so good in person, so I'm excited for everyone to be pulling these cards because they look so dang good. Number four is this King Gambit artwork. One of the better Pokemon from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, in my opinion. And this artwork is so awesome because he is literally like a samurai lord sitting there with his minions, his army. You could just feel the power emanating off of him. He's got his two bodyguard by sharps on his left and right, and then he's got his little army in front of him. It's so sick. I'm so glad that they gave Bisharp another evolution and they made King Gambit look so damn cool. The only thing that I think looks a little weird on King Gambit is the little things coming off of his body, but that might be something tied into some move or something in the game that he does. It might be something that he closes on his enemy and then he's able to do, you know, beat him up or something from close range. I'm not 100% sure yet, but at the same time, like it looks so 
freaking good. I love King Gambit. I love this artwork. This one might be a surprise, but the number three is the Miriam alternate art trainer card. So far, I think this is one of the most unique art styles we've seen yet in Pokemon, in my opinion. I love the comic book-esque art style. I love that there's almost like an after image of kind of a texture happening and then kind of showing like that she's falling forward. It's really so sick. It's crazy that I put it at number three. I'm almost, I'm almost regretting not putting this number one because it looks so damn good. This card is going to be definitely one of the big hits from the set. I don't know if it'll be as big a hit as it is in Japanese because Japanese people really like their waifus. We figured that out over the last like six months. This card is just so beautiful. I even love the little colorful paint spider that goes across the card. I love color in my Pokemon cards. If you haven't figured that out from all the other top 10s, most of the cards that make the top 10 are super colorful. I have a lot of like nice contrast and everything happening. I haven't encountered Miriam yet in the game, but I'm sure she'll be an interesting character. And hopefully this card aesthetic matches the type of character that she is, which I'm assuming that it probably does. Now, my favorite legendary from these games, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, is Koridon. I love the design of this legendary. One thing I love about this card is, you know, they're in the jungle. I like all the different environments we're incorporating into these cards now too. We're seeing a lot of these Pokemon in their actual natural habitats. Like we saw Great Tusk was in the desert with a freaking sandstorm happening, a sand tornado happening around him. And now we have Koridon in the jungle with a little Dedenne running across the front. I just love the kind of headdress, kind of tribal aspect that Koridon has in his design. I just really love his design. I really love this card. There's so much detail happening here. And I love the little Dedenne running across the front. Front. It just adds a little bit more depth and detail to the card itself. I love the perspective that we're kind of, we have foreground, middle ground, background stuff. In vintage Pokemon cards, we, you didn't really have anything in the foreground. You had Pokemon background, like the Sugimori artworks back in the day, the Arita artworks back in the day were Pokemon background. Now we have these really fleshed out artworks where you have foreground, middle ground, background, and we can provide so much more perspective, so much more story in every card. It's just so beautiful. I love this card a lot, but this is only number two. So what possibly could I think is the best card in this set? Number one is the Miraidon. I don't like Miraidon as much as Koraidon, but I love this card way more because I am a sucker for Tokyo. I'm a sucker for that neon light city aesthetic. And again, we're talking totally different settings. We've got Miraidon now in the middle of Tokyo with a bunch of neon lights in front of a crazy looking like penthouse apartment where Fido is just looking up at him like, what the hell is that thing? Probably terrified, but also very interested. We had a jungle, we had the desert, now we have a city. We've got so much going on in all of these cars. There's so much difference, you know? And it's one of those things that's like, nothing feels the same. And I kind of like that at the same time. You don't know if you're maybe losing a little bit of identity per set when all the cards look so drastically different, but I also think it adds so much more to the variety throughout opening these sets and everything, the, the the totally different looking cards that you can get in the totally different settings and the stories that they tell. I can't say it enough. This is the best artwork we've, we've gotten, period, out of Pokemon. It just keeps getting better and better and better and better. Make sure to let me know in the comments below what your top 10 from the set are, or at least your favorite Pokemon from the set. Make sure to hit the like button. If you're not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye, guys. Later.